Okay, hopefully no one has followed me. What I'm going to tell you is top secret and cannot let the big N hear about it. In one of my previous videos I said, I mean, I assume they have the same library of games. Well, as it turns out, it's not true. There are some games that Nintendo wants to hide from you. Well, technically there are games that are only on the American Nintendo Switch Online as well, so it's not like the Japanese don't miss out on anything, but we are not enemies. We are allies in this war. So you may wonder why some retro games are only on the Japanese NSO and is there no way I can get them? Surprisingly, yes, there is. As it turns out, you don't even need multiple online subscriptions, just one on your main account. There's technically a separate app for the Japanese Nintendo Switch Online called Famicom. Obviously, since in Japan, the NES was called the Famicom. And today I'm gonna showcase all of these exclusive Famicom games and also how you can get them on your Switch. You will also find timestamps in the comments and the description, so feel free to cherry pick. If you want the Famicom app, it's not available on the US store. But all you need to do is create a new profile on your Switch. If that's done, hop on your PC and create a new Nintendo account with a new email address. But make sure to select Japan as your region. It's as simple as making your main account. Once you get the verification code, enter it and you are done. Hop back on your Switch, log in, and open the eShop with your newly created account. The easiest is to just go to the Nintendo Switch Online section, there you will find the app for Famicom. Again, you don't need NSO subscription on this new account download. When it's down, make sure to open the Famicom app, but with your main account that has the NSO subscription. It will check your subscription, but the app itself is not region locked, so any subbed account is good. You can now play Super Mario Bros. 3 on hard mode. Congratulations. But some games are not created equally. You will find some that are only here. Well, some of them are because they just wouldn't make sense in the US market. Tsupari Osumo, as in the name is, is a sumo game. Not only the rules of sumo may be foreign in an international market, but the game heavily relies on the sumo hierarchy, so probably it would take some explaining. I'm still a little sad about it because the game does have an only fight mode without any story, and this is one of the few sumo games on the Famicom. Would have loved to see the game jump onto international service because there are no sumo games there. As for the story, you start by naming your character from the limited amount of kanji given. I named my Kuromi. Yeah. You have to beat sumo wrestlers one by one in the tournaments to gain power and climb up the ladder. The controls are not the most complex, but it's still a very fun game. Also, rare case of the pause screen actually being fun. The game doesn't have a save function. Instead, you can check your status page and it will give you a pseudo sentence that asks the password. Entering it takes some time. <laughs> if you let your content in the game exactly how you left it, it even have a two-player mode which I can't really try out due to lack of friendship. But I'm sure it's great fun. Four out of five. Another disappointing absence for me is Joy Macofight. Similar case, while the game does have a story, in its core, this is only a mecha robot fighting game. It's one of the later Famicom releases, so it has superb graphics and gameplay. The story starts with two scientists who are making robots until one day one of them disappears, stealing all the robots and declare war with the whole earth. We only have left one robot who we can use to fight, Sukapon. Don't laugh. Your job is to eventually beat every robot. Once you do, you will save them in your inventory and they become playable. It's a really fun game and weirdly smooth by the robots not having a body. I really like this game and pst, here's a little trick for you. Pick Tiger and go for only the suplex. Best move in the game. You will be unbeatable. Like all two-player titles, this one is also playable via online, so if anyone is up for some joy mega fight and chill, I'm down. Five out of five. The next one is the first Fire Emblem? Wait a second, I think I remember it in English. 
being the first ever Fire Emblem made, it has a huge legacy. It must be in the store, right? Hmm, that's, that's weird. Was I just a mandolin? Wait a second. So, Nintendo, you already made an English version of it, but it's only for the anniversary. It's, it's, it's not available anymore. It's not available anymore? Okay, um, how, how much? How much is it to obtain it now legally? Uh, and if I just want the code that, that's... So, don't let Nintendo hear about this, but there is another way to play Fire Emblem in English. If you search really hard, you will find a site that gives you a magical file. Combining it with your ROM, which you legally obtained and dumped into an NES file, you can actually play it in an emulator. But if you're speaking Japanese and you're watching this video because you're that bored, there are actually two special versions in the Japanese NSO. If you don't know, special versions or SPs are modified versions of the game. It can be anything from God mode to starting with more hearts or having rare weapons from the get-go. And for the first SP version, this is exactly the case. It's called the Triangle Attack version. And what it does is, well, it grants you the famous Triangle Attack from the start. You just have to click and it does it. You know, I start to feel like these attacks lose their magic when there is no accomplishment attached to them, but maybe it's just me. The second SP is called Climax Edition and yeah, puts you in the last level and hey, it even shows you the controls? <laughs> Wait. So they expect people to just jump to the last level without playing the game even one time? Those controls are not even there in the original game. Nintendo, you really took the effort to make this control scheme, but you can't put the English version to the US service? I'm not like super into Fire Emblem, but all I can say is Nintendo, that's an L out of a five. Now, there are some games that has regional differences, more than in Super Mario Bros. 3, but I wouldn't necessarily call them entirely different games. Adventures of Lolo. But Hina, wait, you may say as an American viewer of mine, we have Adventures of Lolo as well. Like, it starts off easy, but it gets really complex as time goes on. It's a really fun game where you have to solve puzzles, avoid the enemies, and push the blocks in order to achieve your goal. It's a really fun game. You are right. And now, let's look at the first level in the Japanese version. Ah! It looks harder. Not necessarily impossible, but look at that. So here's the thing, as you may have guessed, Adventures of Lolo is not the same in all regions. Actually, the very first Lolo game was not even in the Famicom. It was called Agarland and originally was released on the MSX, a fairly popular computer in Japan. Later on, Agarland got a port on the Famicom 2 and when it reached the US, it got the name Adventures of Lolo there. But in Japan, the Adventures of Lolo was actually the fifth one in this series and came out later than the American one. Actually, if you open up Agorland, you will see that this resembles a lot more a first level. <laughs> it's a little weird for me that Agorland is not on the Japanese and its own service, or at least why not release the US version as well, like as you probably know with Super Mario Brothers 2. But it's a great game, 4 out of 5. Still not as good as Banner Land. Nintendo. Why not Banner Land? Nintendo. Why? <laughs> to a lesser extent, similar cases, Clue Clue Land. The game is also on the US and SO as well, but they are slightly different. Clue Clue Land was originally an arcade game in Japan, but very soon it was ported to Famicom, and it was actually one of the launch titles for the NES in North America. What you see on the US page is exactly that game. But, and actually there's a slight mistake by Nintendo for the Japanese box art, it's wrong. That box art, that is the initial Japanese version. 
but the game is actually not that. After the game's success, they re-released it for the VS system, Nintendo's arcade system. It had improvements like difficulty selector and a lot more puzzles. Later on, that version was ported over to the Famicom D system, and that is the game that is on the Japanese NSO service. This is how the disc system boxes look like. So it's not a big mistake, rather a nice little surprise, because instead of the initial game, you are getting an improved game, which kind of resembles Pac-Man, but it's vastly different. Kurikuri means going round and round in Japanese, and that's exactly what you need to do. Instead of choosing your direction, you grab onto the edges and go round and round. It's a really fun game. I recommend it to everyone, even the original version. 5 out of 5. And an honorable mention is the SP version of Mario Open Golf, also known as NES Open Tournament Golf in the Western market. Wow, wow, wow. Why would only the Japanese get the SP version, you may say, when they wanted the harder Super Mario Bros. 3, you may say? Well, I am sorry to break it down to you, but once again it's because the US version is just better. This SP, rather than SP, more like a patch to the initial game content to be in par with the US version. On par. It's golf. The US version has three modes, stroke play, match play and tournament. Whichever you choose, there are three courses, the US, Japan and UK. But the Japanese version initially not only not having tournament, but also only having the Japan courses. So I would say the exclusive SP here was more than warranted. With that, besides Japan, you also get Australia, France, Hawaii, UK and extra courses. You just go off the golf ball into the golf hole. I'm sorry, I was never really into golf. I tried mini golf though once. Three out of five. Oh wait, that would be an eagle. Then seven out of five. It's just golf. And if we are at sports, we have some of these flavors as well. Smash Ping Pong. Originally an arcade game by Konami, it's one of the common cases of bringing arcade games into the living room. It has one and two player modes and honestly, I think it looks really good graphically. As for the gameplay, I can't say much. I am horrible in ping pong. I can't even beat myself. Now the part I am actually qualified to talk about, aka I read like two Wikipedia pages. The game was actually released in Europe later on the Wii Virtual Console. So even if Nintendo thinks it's not the best Pong type game with no replacement in the US service, I still don't get it. 3 out of 5. There is not much to talk about here. I love arcades and hate sports. And talking about arcade? <laughs> Sorry, that is a horrible transition. I'm already burnt out with my own transition. Uh... ER Kung Fu, another Konami arcade classic. Alongside with Karate Champ, these games were the fighting games back then, basically defining a whole genre. They are beloved as arcade games and as Famicom ports too. So why they are not on the US service? Now, I am not saying there's a lack of good fighting games there, there are some masterpieces, but still, there, no, there, there must be a reason. Wait a second, there is no way, what is this arcade archives? They're, they're $8, they're $8 each! Uh, I think if I want to play arcade games, uh, I know what to do. So this right one feels more expensive. Yeah, yeah, dog, this will be it. Now, let's forget about those greedy corporations. And uh, talk about war? Who write these scripts? Famicom Wars, a war simulator between the Blue and the Red Army. <laughs> now I see why this game is not in the US service. It was made by Intelligence Systems, who later on made Fire Emblem, so there are a lot of similarities in the strategy system. You have the option to play versus another player, versus a computer, or you can just put it computer versus computer, so I can leave it running for footage while I can do other things like playing with my friends. Honestly, 
I am not that into war simulators. My only experience with any kind of simulators is going over places I've been to in flight sim. So for me, this will always be the game that Fire Emblem got the inspiration from. But I do realize that this is an actually even now very active and popular game with the latest releases delayed for obvious reasons. <sighs> but a series less controversial and I think more fun is Kudiakun or how it's more known to the West, the River City games. I was never into beat em up games, but I assume if you were, you have at least heard about Kunio Kun. He has been around for actually, I think almost 40 years now? Kunio, the tough high school boy, has been saving the students for a long time and seeing this absolutely massive universe with some of the newest games, like a Kunio game that is actually in ancient China, a Kunio game where the girls from Rao High School have to save the kidnapped Kunio, and even a melee battle royale Kunio game that is actually on sale, so I would think about buying it if the arcanes were too expensive and I can't stand another kidney! <sighs> It's a massive universe that I can't cover, so let me just pinch a tiny bit of it. The first entries to the series were, surprise surprise, arcade games, but later on they were ported onto a Famicom. A spin-off that started as a sequel but during development it became its own game, Double Dragon actually has both 1 and 2 on all regions services. Hooray! We're joining the timeline with Downtown Nekati Monogatari or River City Ransom on the NES and Yes, they are on all regions NSOs. They are typical beat em ups with really unique mechanics and a really good story, lovable characters. It was somewhat of a success in Japan, but the game never really made it over the sea. It got international releases, but it really is they didn't instantly blow up. Despite that, actually, slowly, but the game eventually earned the Western market too. Now, with all that being said, we are here to talk about a sequel to this big hit, actually, probably even a bigger hit. Danta Nekatsukyo Shinkaku. And of course, this game, probably the most famous one, never made it into the West. As in the full name of the game, the story is about a competition between high schools. There are various athletic events and yes, obviously the main part of the game is to use violence and beat up others before they win. The game definitely twists the usual beat em up formula and you can see why this was the one that people love the most. It's not my style, but I can always appreciate games that define such long-standing universes. The weird part is that the sequel to this game was released in the US again under the name of Crash and the Boys Street Challenge. It's sad to see that this was the game that never got an English release, but I hope Nintendo or whoever else has the rights to this game eventually one day will bring it to everyone, but other than this is a Japanese NSO exclusive. Wow, that that sounded kind of epic. I I'm tired. <laughs> Are you not bored? Are you still here? To finish off this video, let's take a step back from these mega franchises. Technos Japan and Konami were definitely the big names, but Arcade World was not only about these big fishes. Arcades were booming when the Famicom hit the market, so obviously a big chunk of the Famicom games are arcade boards, such as Road 16 Turbo. It contained a few improvements compared to the arcade version, like better graphics and difficulty selector, but in heart it's the same game. You can't deny a year after Pac-Man was released, dodging enemies in a maze was kind of a trope, but the small extras like having a zoomed out view when you drive between areas and the diagonal roads does make it unique and I quite like it. While it was never released on the NES system itself, the US NSO does have Famicom only games like the Ninja Jaja Marukun, so it really shouldn't be an excuse. A better excuse could be though that due to a bug in the released Famicom game on Route 9, the game won't recognize you cleared it, so it's impossible to advance further. What's funny is, people analyzed the code and further levels do exist in the code, simply the bug just won't let them come on. These times, I am actually glad we have online updates now. 3 out of 5. I would have given it a 4, but due to a bug, the rating stopped at 3. The game never got super popular, so I'm even surprised it's on the Japanese and still, but more games the better. More games. Like binary life! Rouse System Turbo was later ported onto various systems and re released later in 2001 for the PlayStation 1. 
in part of Sansos Memorial Games. And what a coincidence, the other game that was on that disc was our last game, Atlantis do Nazo, aka the mystery of Atlantis. And if I was confused why the other games were on the NSO, oh boy, <laughs> the game was advertised with the slogan of it surpassed Super Mario. So where to begin with? Obviously the game was a massive flop. Funnily, the game's English version was in the making, but it was never seen the light, thankfully. It is very similar to Mario, but definitely not in quality. The stages are way less fair, the difficulty is not just hard, but the enemies feel tedious. They often slow down progress without any ways to get past them fast. You can barely move once you're in the air, it makes jumps horrible. And the horrible jumps are not held by the awful level design. Often tight corridors where you will bump your head, you will be slowed down, you need to wait until the enemies are not shielded so you can blow them with your bombs. Everything with this game just feels cheap and bad. It's like someone made their first game in NES Maker. The game is just boring. It was already an enormous challenge to take on Mario, but the game fails to be fun even by itself. The game was not loved. It wasn't so bad that it was good. It was just bad. I am absolutely puzzled how this game ended up in the library. If you wanna go after something that's so bad that it's actually good, Hoshio Mirohito is bad, but it has a cult following kind of because it's so bad. Hello, Pastina. I am from the future to tell you that you are wrong because Hostia Minuhito is on the eShop. For about $8? Questionable price? Just saying that the new Kirby game is only 15 so... If you wanna buy either, I'm not judging. There are just so many better candidates. It's one out of five. And that's it! Ooh, the Famicom games that are not in the US service. Despite some reasons for these differences, and some games that probably even the Japanese subscribers don't want to play, I hope you can at least find some gems in this list. And if you don't want to go through all this hassle, there is always MU. It's me, Mario. Oh, oh shit! Oh shit! I need backup. I need. I need. I need backup. Wish me luck in the battle, and I hope you had fun. Goodbye.